Tell us about the challenge that you set yourself to turn £10,000 into £100,000. Yeah, it was uh, three years ago now I had set this challenge. And what I wanted to do was to uh, sh give one of the most difficult things for newer traders and for a lot of traders who have been around for even a few years is belief. The belief that they can do it, that they can be successful and that they can actually turn a good a good uh, return on their accounts, whatever it is. Because there's people like me who can show them and teach them all these techniques, but how many people like me actually put their neck on the line and give, say, look, there's a real life trading account there, and I'm now gonna trade this over a period of the next two years, and you're gonna be able to see how I get on. I'm gonna show you all the trades over the next two years. Very few people do that. So I thought, I'm gonna do this, put my neck on the line here, and see what I can, achieve over a period, over a long enough period to say that statistically it's way beyond luck. See, if I'd have just said, oh look, there's, I've done a load of trades this week or a load of trades this month and uh, look how much I, uh, I've returned, that could have just been luck. I could just trade over a one month period, get lucky over that month and then just put a video out there saying, look how well I did. But by doing something over a sustained long period where people were regularly getting to see my, my accounts and how I was getting on, they were seeing the ups and the downs, it, it helped them with their belief. So that's why I set that challenge out. And so I started off, it was because I was doing a webinar for some Americans, American traders. And I thought, uh, okay, Amer they wanted me to do something a bit snazzy as a, as a presentation. So I thought, okay, I'll, I'll do a, I'll see, I'll trade over like a month or two and see, see how I get on. And then I thought, that's not gonna be good enough, like I've just said. So, why don't I train a trade over a sustained period to prove beyond doubt it's way beyond any statistical probabilities and everything else? So that's what gave me the idea. And I thought um, 10K, $10,000 in, because that's what it, how I set it up, is a typical starting account amount in the US for a trader. They put $10,000, roughly speaking, as an average into an account. So I thought, okay, 10K, 10K into 100K, that's got a nice ring to it. So I didn't have a clue if I was going to be able to achieve the goal or not, but that was... It was a nice strap line, and that's what I set out to do. I, in fact, so I did it over, I set it over a two year period. By the end of the two years, I hadn't actually achieved the goal, which I was actually quite pleased that I didn't because it made it more real. But I'd still done 600 odd percent over the two years. But then I carried on after, the, after that two years to see if I could get it to the thousand percent. And then it was, took me two years and 10 months in the end to get to the thousand odd percent. So I did achieve it, but it took a little bit longer. That's amazing. So if I gave you 10,000 pounds, I just said, can Charlie in three years? Or did you it was really- a lot of hard work. I was gonna say, did you really feel the pressure? Cause it was a complete challenge that you yeah. did, as opposed to if you just were investing that money yourself behind closed doors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, I, I did that challenge um, specifically. It was a spec, what I call a speculative challenge. So I did take slightly bigger risks than I would do on my main accounts. So whereas on my main accounts, I would normally be risking less than a half a percent per trade, I was allowing myself to risk 2% or so per trade on some trades if I wanted to. So it, I was taking a little bit more risk. But the other thing with that challenge is that because I'd set that challenge out, I, I was committed to achieving that challenge. When I'm trading normally, I can be relaxed. It doesn't matter if I take a week off or, or I'm water skiing or whatever it might be. <laughs> it doesn't matter so much. But when you're in the middle of that challenge, every week is like, oh, that's another week that I could be trading and getting that account up. So it was quite a lot of work to do it, but I just wanted to do it to prove to people what, what can be achieved if, if you develop the skill sets as a trader then there's no reason why you can't do something like that. Well, not a bad return for your challenge. For no, no, I, didn't, I know, I <laughs> bought the Porsche. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And so I, I, knew, and I knew that would be a, a bonus for me at the end of, at the, end of the, um, the, uh, the period. But, and I did make a promise to some of my traders during it because I, I did a health challenge a couple of years ago to see, I was 41 then, and um, to see if I could get into the, the fittest or the best shape of my life. I'm generally fit and healthy anyway, but um, so I, my body fat went down to 3% body fat. But over that period, all I was eating was white uh, cod, any white fish, 
chicken and broccoli, essentially. You know, uh, that, that was the diet for a, for a couple of months or so. So it worked and I was got really good shape, but you can't sustain that. That's literally just for like a, having a photo shoot and stuff. So at the end of that challenge, um, I ended up having such a sweet tooth because I hadn't taken anything sweet on in months. And the joke was with my traders at the end of that challenge that, because um, I had such a sweet tooth, that I would all, I'd buy them all a piece of cake and would get this huge cake at the end of my 10K to 100K challenge and would all demolish this cake, cake together. And I've yet to fulfill that, that uh, ah. promise. So at some point I'm gonna go to, there's a wonderful cake maker I know, get her to make a huge cake and then we'll all get together and have Did cake anybody and piggyback on your trades throughout that challenge? No, that, well they would have done, yeah. indirectly, yes, because during that challenge I have a tra live trading room. And so when I'm in that live trading room, and if I'm taking trades, then my traders can follow my trades. So some of those trades, then yes, they would have been able to, but not all of them, because um, I'm only in that trading room for half the day. Yeah. And the rest of the half, if I'm taking trades when I'm not in that room, then they wouldn't have followed those. Yeah. Charlie, you've won trading competitions in the past, but how does that relate to trading in general? Yeah, uh, every year I enter, there's a trading competition in London um, where I compete against another trader. We have like a live trade-off. And actually next year, in 2017, I'm up, uh, up against a computer. So it's going to be man versus machine next year. So I've got lucky in the last few years that I've won those competitions. But So we thought, okay, what's the next challenge for me to, to do? So I'm going up an automate, against an automated trading system. So we'll see how that goes. But when it comes to trading competitions, they're, they're, they generally only last a couple of hours. So you're only getting a small window with which to trade over. So it might take one, two, maybe three trades over that, over that time. But how does that relate to the wider trading? Well, you could just get lucky in a trading competition, for example. But in the wider trading world, you measure yourself over a much greater number of trades. So you really want to be measuring yourself out over 100 trades or 500 trades to say, okay, are you consistent? I'm not talking about consistent as in being right every time, but do you have an edge? So are you right, let's say 50 or 60% of the time, plus your risk to reward is good and positive, so therefore you have a positive outcome on your trading. So that's the real measure of a trader, is not just one or two trades, the real measure of a trader is can they consistently repeat that time and time again over an, a much larger number of trades. Have you ever thought about getting into social trading and maybe setting up something similar to Ayondo? Uh, well, I almost already have social trading in that I have a live online trading room. So we have a number of um, traders that will be in that live trading room on a daily basis. And so for a few hours a day, um, I'm in that trading room. So that's social trading in that they can follow what I'm doing when I'm trading. But as regards to out and out social trading, no, not really, because the problem that you can have is sometimes when you're taking a trade, if you let's say you've got 500 people, for argument's sake, following you on a trade, and I've got a stop loss, let's say, at 20 pips below where I am at, at the, my concern would be that if any, everyone else was following that same trade, then there's a lot of stop losses going into the market all at the same, same price. And the markets like to fulfill orders. And so if there's enough stops all at the same uh, price and there's enough volume at that level, then the risk starts to increase that I'm actually going to get stopped out on a trade, which if I just take on my own, I'm not going to get stopped out because it's less likely to go that way. So for that reason, no, I don't want to have 500 people following me on every trade. And that's what you were saying earlier about your superstition, if anything, it's that, isn't it? It's that some you keep to yourself. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind having pe traders in my, in my trading room taking trades because that's a bit different because there's not 500 of them. And so, but I, it's outside of my control if I went into the social um, trading environment. So until someone sits me down and says, Charlie, it would be fine, but I don't think so. So no, I'd, I'd, <laughs> that's my superstitions again. But no, I'd rather just trade the way I trade.